So let's go. Hello guys and welcome back to the Volks Wizard channel. Now the last video was a review of the Golf R 20 years. Big thanks to everybody who's watched that. It's done really, really well. At the end of that video, I did a quick drive in Racing Line's 400 horsepower tuned Golf 8R. And I asked you guys to let me know via the comments if you wanted me to go back and do a full review of it. Well, big thanks to everybody who got in touch. The result was a resounding yes. So I'm back here in glamorous Milton Keynes to do just that. And it's very good timing because just today, Racing Line have officially released their OEM Plus remap software for EA888 Gen 4 engined cars. Before this, if you wanted your Mark 8 Golf GTI or R or Cupra 300 to go faster, you had to have a tuning box. Well, they're all well and good, but you get a lot more bang for your buck with a remap, as I will gladly show you later. But before we go for a drive, let me give you a quick tour of the Racing Line modifications on this Mark 8 Golf R. Before we get started I'd like to say a big thanks to everybody who has subscribed to the channel. If you haven't yet though please please do so it could be the difference between this channel being around next year and not to do so there's a link in the description of the video below. You might have an icon on the bottom right corner of your screen or just hunt out that famous red button and press that. Also big thanks to the 50 or so people that have bought calendars as a result of the Golf R 20 years review video. They're all in the post hopefully they'll get to you before Christmas maybe before the new year, depending on what the post office decide to do. We've still got a few left, so I'll put a link to the eBay advert in the description of the video below, or just go to eBay and search for Volks Wizard Calendar. Now, before we talk about the modifications on Racing Line's Golf 8R, let's talk about the factory option. So it's a 2021 car, it's in pure white. That was the free color. You could pay more for lapis blue or deep black. They haven't, but they have spent money on the performance pack, which is a lot more important than the color. It gives you the big spoiler at the back, which works at speed to push the back of the car down and it also looks really really cool it gives you 19 inch wheels which have been swapped on this car we'll talk about those shortly it gives you the drift mode which is a bit of a gimmick quite frankly because all mark 8 golf r's have got the torque vectoring rear diff and that's really what matters but what it does give you that does matter is the ring mode now performance pack weirdly doesn't give you dynamic chassis control that's 850 pounds on top of the 2000 pounds for performance pack and you do really need it because ring mode's probably the best bit about the performance pack and the most important thing about ring mode is having your dampers in soft because the ring is not a very good surface and if you want to run the curbs you need to have your dampers soft that's how the fastest laps in golfs are on the Nord Schleifer so with DCC you can have comfort you can have it harder if you're on a proper circuit that's smooth as well it really is a no-brainer at 850 pounds we've also got the head-up display and I think we've got winter pack as well so it's a pretty well specced car they haven't indulged in the lever but they've indulged where it matters okay now on to the modifications that hopefully from the angle you can see this car sits a little bit lower that's because it's running racing line sport spring kit i'm reliably informed the people of milton keynes love this kit because there are loads of roundabouts here as you'll have seen in the golf r20 video and this kit makes the cars handle so much better on them the car also sits really nice it's not too low either you won't be losing bits of your front bumper every time you go on a bit of uneven ground they also work with passive dampers or dcc adaptive dampers which we have got on this car as i mentioned earlier the wheels that come with the performance pack have been swapped instead we have racing lines very popular r360 wheel here it's in gunmetal you can have black or you can have the silver 
I had on my Cooper 280 back in the summer. They're an eight and a half by 19 inch wheel. They just take the standard 235, 35, 19 inch tires on this car. They're actually the factory fitted Goodyear Eagle F1 Super Sports, my favorite tire, an easy match for the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S. This car could have come on Hancock's, it could have come on Bridgestone's, but I think they got very lucky because this is the perfect tire for this car for the road. Holding the wheel onto the car, we have Racing Line stud and nut kit. And inside the wheel, we have their stage three monoblock brake kit. This car is on the 355 mil discs. You can have a 380 disc as well if you're gonna run 19s only. This car swaps from 18s to 19s, so they've gone with a smaller disc, but it's still a massive upgrade over the factory item. We've got six piston calipers, and the calipers can come in a range of colors. Red and blue, obviously, are in that range. As well as working better than the factory setup, they're a lot lighter. They're just 60% of the weight of the factory brake, so that's a a win-win. Okay, moving on to the side of the car, we've got Racing Line's decal that breaks up the white of this R because it hasn't got like black down here like a GTI. There's a lot of white and the black actually breaks it up nicely. At the back, we've got Racing Line's wiper delete, which gives a really clean look. Well, clean until it gets dirty. And here, it's probably my little favorite touch because how can you not like something that makes putting fuel in a car better because I hate putting fuel in cars. We've got their billet aluminium fuel filler cap, which, yeah, I love that. This is prototype for the moment, but Racing Line customers said they want nicer discs for the back if they've got them on the front. So Racing Line are currently testing this 3 and 10 mil rear disc, which um, it's just a standard size, but it's got the uh, it's got the grooves in it to match the front. So yeah, that's prototype at the moment, but rest assured that'll be on the market very, very soon. And there's lots more good stuff under the bonnets. So we haven't got the manual bonnet today. We've got Racing Line's telescopic gas strut and they've been very careful to calibrate it so it feels like the gas strut on the 7.5. The bonnet isn't opened with a massive because some of them do do that and also it drops down and closes itself from about here which is what they should do. Okay let's open the bonnet again and have a good look what's actually inside it. Now the first thing that you notice is that there's a lot of carbon fibre in here. That's all from the Racing Line R600 carbon air intake. Now whatever this is made of, it works really well at reducing intake air temperatures. But now it's made from carbon, it looks amazing as well. The R600 also gives you a little bit more intake raw, which these cars don't have much of a standard. It's definitely not overpowering. I've got this on my Cupra 280 and I love it because not only does it sound good, it looks great even in plastic and it works really well. That's really, really important because not all intakes do. We've got the coolant underhose for the R600. Without this, the factory coolant pipe hose will sit on the top of the R600 with this. It just sits underneath and it gives a much cleaner look. We've got the turbo intake hose, which I need to get for my Cooper 280 that's made of silicon. This bit of engineering here is Racing Line's oil management system, currently in prototype stage. It's going to have to be different to the one that's on the market for EA888 Gen 3s because it's a different engine. Other than that, we've got their usual range of high quality dress up bits. So starting at the front, we've got their screen wash cap. We've got their oil filter housing, which I really love because the factory ones plastic when you put a spanner on it you think it's just gonna gonna break so we've got their oil filler cap coolant cap and brake fluid cap and another favorite of mine actually is their dipstick which is a yeah quite a nice touch and there's one little bit I need to show you in the boot before we go for a drive Now, just like every Golf since Mark V, the Golf 8 has got a laser welded body shell, which makes it really, really stiff. But there's no such thing as a body shell that's too stiff. The stiffer the shell, the more the suspension can work without being affected by body flex. So Racing Line have created their carbon rear body brace, which gives you a little bit more torsional rigidity at the rear end of the car, as well as having a functional benefit though, it also looks really, really good. Whether we'll be able to feel its benefit on the road today, I don't know, but I think it's time now 
we go and drive Racing Line's 400 plus horsepower Golf 8R with lots of other modifications that I'm sure we can feel the benefit of. Well guys, it's great to be back in Racing Line's Mark 8 Golf R. Big thanks to everybody who said I should go back and do a full review. This video wouldn't have been possible without your support. Now conditions are a little bit different to what they were a week ago. It's seven degrees positive now, it was minus two last week, but I don't think that's a good thing for Mark 8 Golf Rs. I think they revel in slippery conditions and luckily it's not perfectly dry right now. I think in dry, warm conditions, it's just too easy to go fast. There's no edginess to them, they just do it you know but in these conditions and particularly last week when it was it wasn't really frosty or icy on the road it was just gritted and a bit damp the cars came alive even the r20 with 333 horsepower felt edgy this car with 405 felt yeah just so feisty i love it you know you have to be careful with when you put the throttle down but then it won't oversteer like a bmw and kill you it won't understeer and go into a barrier or anything like that it just helps you round the corner it's just it's just, yeah, it's a very, very clever car, this. Anyway, today I wanted to see if there's more to it than sort of straight line performance and roundabouts. So we're on a classic British B-Road. It's not particularly well surfaced. It's got loads of undulations in it. And we're on Racing Line Sport Springs. And they're okay. I don't really like a firm ride very much at all, but then you get the agility. And then with this car, that torque just comes in. The rear axle helps you around the corner. It's just... This road's probably not the most flowing one, but if you get the right road and you can just indulge in the torque and the neutrality and the rear axle sort of torque vectoring, it's a very, very exhilarating drive. And we've got massive brakes as well. So if something pulls out in front of you or a pheasant walks out in front of you, you can stop on a sixpence. Let me demonstrate now, it's 54. Oh, geez. Okay, and it will do that again and again. I know some of the factory brake setups are pretty good on one stop, but they can't do that again and again. We've got the 355 mil discs on this car. If you run 19s, you can go even bigger at 380. Nothing has been done to the exhaust on this car, but it does sound fruitier, particularly if you change modes. So if we go into sport or comfort where it's quiet, and then go into race and then dri uh, special, nerve I suppose it drops a gear. There's a little bit of fake noise at the front of the car, but it actually sounds like the engine, so I can forgive that. And we've got a little bit more induction from the R600. A bit of a nasty pothole here where it can crash but I'll take it wide. <sighs> the way it picks up it's all about the torque that's why Racing Line have had to produce two maps for this car they both produce 405 horsepower but one is 480 newton meters of torque one's 520 and that's for a number of reasons basically if you've got a front wheel drive car 520 is too much if you've got a manual clutch 520 is too much and also if you don't want to have the gearbox remap than 520 is too much because the gearbox will only allow the engine to produce 480 newton meters of torque when it hits that ceiling it's not very nice when it does that so you're best off either having the gearbox remapped and getting the full fat 520 or sticking to the lower torque map the lower torque map on its own 720 pounds including VAT it's the same price for the high torque map but you need to bundle that with the TCU the transmission control unit map Individually, they'd be £1,200, including VAT. Together, Race Line do you a deal, that's like 10% off. Uh, actually, no, it's nearly 20% off, so 960 including that, for the two. And that, I think, is the one I'd go for. If you're a, a market Golf R owner in the States and you've got a manual gearbox, then that'll be very interesting, because you should go for the low torque map there. But if you decide to upgrade to a, a stronger clutch, then Race Line will upgrade that map to the high torque one for free. I'd be really keen to know how you guys are getting on with those clutches. Are they better than the ones we had in Europe in the Mark 7 7.5s, which weren't very good? I do really, really hope so, because they have no excuse for putting that really feeble, under-engineered clutch in a car and shipping it all the way 
to the States. Right then, back on the dual carriageways and roundabouts of Milton Keynes. Then, so, the easiest way to demonstrate this car's performance is to start off slowly. So, you can see the speedo now, that's different to last time. We'll select third gear, 40, bang, 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 it's getting excited. I'm excited, I'm not bang, bang, banging though at my rear end just yet, I might do in a second. Okay, well, 40, okay, 40, right, let's go. 70. Okay, we've got our Tesla here. Let's do some in gear then. So that's doing about 60. Let's try fifth. Don't have to work it too hard. It's all mid range. 60, 60, 60. Now, 70. Before we even got to the Tesla. Okay, now the map isn't just about increasing the performance. There's some nice little touches in it. For example, they've made start stop inverted so it's off by default and if you want to turn it on you have to press the button that's pretty cool there's some other bits and pieces as well that are just added value with this map well i kind of be missing an opportunity guys if i didn't launch this car so we're going to do that now the road's really quiet it's pretty dry but it's not perfect um, I should say this car's got a dog bone mount insert, it's a prototype at the moment, but it just takes out some of the slack from the transmission mounting, so it should really help it with the launch, so let's go. Oh. Uh, well, I've launched quite a few cars in my time, and none of them were like that. It was moving around quite quite a bit quite a lot yeah <laughs> i think we should do that again okay so got it in sport mode on the gearbox and we're in race and there we've got traction control in the esc sport so should be it then let's go flipping hell 60. There's something disconcerting about the back because it seems to just take a few degrees of attitude and you don't know if that's going to get better or worse when it changes into second gear but it does straighten out that is pretty pretty damn damn amazing guys well guys once again it's got dark before i can finish the video but that's just because i've been driving this car for so long because i really really enjoy it it's pretty well known i'm not a massive fan of golf R's and not even the Mark 8 Golf R, to be honest. Compared to my Club Sport, it felt a little bit, well, boring. But as I found last week, in wintry conditions, they come alive. The R20 was a hoot, and this was even more of a hoot. And today, it's not minus two, but it's still pretty greasy out there. And I've tried to get a better feel for what this car's doing. And there's definitely a lot more happening with the rear axle. If you're turning off a roundabout, you're gonna be turning like that. You really have to sort of, feel what the back of the car is doing because it's coming round and you're having to wind the lock off because the back of the car is helping you around that corner and that's just so different to Mark 7 7.5 I really don't understand why the media seem to champion the 7 7.5 as a better drive than this because this is so much more neutral there's so much more happening with that rear axle and with all this power and torque under the bonnet you know it does more of it more of the time the beauty of this map and this engine as well, it's a very torquey engine. You don't have to rev it. It's got a load of mid-range. That's what this is all about. Even the low torque engine map is still pretty punchy, but the high torque one is just incredible, really. And I can genuinely see myself, if I can afford it in a year, buying one of these just before they go out of warranty. I'll take it to the dealer to get any warranty bits sorted. Then when it drops out of warranty, I will be here and I'll have the transmission map and the gearbox Mac with a high torque because it's just so exciting to drive. It's a real thrill, which I wouldn't expect from a Golf R. 
it's still a golf it's super practical it'll still do probably 40 miles to the gallon as long as you don't indulge in that performance all the time it will go around a track i think because if you've got dcc you can bang it into race mode it's hard so that should be pretty good and the best bit is if you put winter tires on it it's unstoppable in the snow with the four-wheel drive it is the perfect all-rounder anyway guys as ever thanks for watching this volks wizard video keep subscribing keep commenting i do read them all and i reply to nearly all of them i really enjoy that in that engagement with you guys but most importantly have a really really good christmas and when you get to my age you kind of appreciate that older relatives aren't around forever so if you've got older relatives make sure you really enjoy your time with them and keep a look out for my next video which will be on a much older car than a Mark 8. I've hinted about this car on Instagram a couple of weeks ago. Well, that's coming, yeah, it will be on the channel, hopefully within a week. Have a great Christmas.